If you follow the manuscript order of pieces within the children's album, then the last movement of the doll saga is the doll's burial. In this movement, what we see is a traditional funeral procession for the doll. Um, today, funerals are usually conducted um, either indoors or there is a procession of cars, you know, with funeral flags driving slowly through streets, stopping traffic um, from the memorial chapel to the uh, cemetery. But that is not how funerals were done um, around Tchaikovsky. The procession would go on foot through city streets carrying the beer, or perhaps a horse-drawn carriage would be carrying um, the casket of the deceased, and the mourners would be following on foot. In other words, the funeral is some kind of a march. This is very important for understanding of this piece. What gets most students in this is the dotted rhythm. Now, dotted rhythms are difficult, even though mathematically they're quite straightforward, they go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But in many cases, that sort of rhythm doesn't work. One of the many cases in which it doesn't work is any sort of a march. To my ear, that completely misses the march-like quality here. In fact, to make something sound like a march, we need to overdub. The ratio is going to be not 3 to 1, but like 6 to 1, or something of that nature. Perhaps. To my ear, that sounds much more like a funeral march. It still has the trudging, difficult quality. I mean, we are very sad for the doll, um, but also at the same time, this prepares the young pianist for the future funeral marches they might be lucky enough to play, like the famous one by Chopin, right? The next trouble in this funeral march for the doll is the double note. If you have heard me in some of the earlier videos in this series, I discuss these quite a bit. The idea here is to make sure that the notes are absolutely simultaneous, not That wouldn't sound very much like a march now, would it? To make double notes or chords simultaneous, there are two things to think about. Thing number one is you must play them from the surface of the key. If you play them from the air, you will run into various problems. Our fingers are all different lengths. The keys are also different heights depending on whether they're white or black. As a result, the amount of time needed for a finger to descend and to press down the key is different for each note. We can't have that. It's impossible to control. So much better idea is to start touching a key in the first place and then bring it down at the same time. The second aspect of playing chords simultaneously to consider is that you have to make sure that you're using the entire hand as one unit, not each finger moving independently like a tentacle, but in fact as the whole hand moving down as one unit to help us bring the notes down at the same time. Finally, whenever you have chords, they must be voiced, meaning that you have to decide exactly how all the notes will be proportioned to each other. In other words, which will be the loudest, which will be the softest, and by how much. What we probably don't want to do is something like this. To my ear at least, this is missing a lot of the darkness and the depth of the basins. That sounds much more like the funeral, doesn't it? The last thing for us to discuss here 
is the overall dynamic structure of the piece. Unlike some of the more difficult movements in this set, the structure here is really quite straightforward. We begin at a pianissimo. The mourners are walking somewhere far away. As they get closer, we get louder and louder, and then finally towards the end of the piece, the mourners walk away, and we return right back to our I hope I've answered a lot of your questions. If you have more, please leave them in the comments. Happy practicing!